Hello, my name is Francesco Bronzino and I'm a research scientist at Nokia Bell Labs. Today, I will talk to you about the work I've done with uh, my colleagues at INRIA, Princeton University and the University of Chicago on inferring the streaming video quality from encrypted traffic. Video traffic is by far the dominant application traffic on today's internet and the total volume of traffic generated by these type of services is still constantly increasing. Forecasting reports, like the one from Cisco shown in the figure, predict that by 2022, we'll see a more than 60% additional increase in traffic. The amount of traffic has become so high that during the lockdown we're currently experiencing, we heard from multiple services like Netflix and YouTube that they will have reduced the quality to avoid overrunning the resources available in the network. In order to cope with these large amounts of traffic, ISPs were able in the past to perform a number of optimizations on the video traffic traversing their networks. But why do we hear only video service providers telling us that they will reduce their quality rather than hearing anything from the ISPs? Well, with the, uh, with the now widespread adoption of encryption, it has become basically impossible for them to apply any of the optimization techniques that were previously possible. When encryption is used, operators are left basically to observe raw features of the traffic, like, uh, for example, the throughput of the flows that are generated by a service. For example, in this figure, we see a sample Netflix session and the throughput generated every second by different flows, each identified by a different color. From it, we can observe that there is a certain amount of information that can still be extracted, like, for example, the initial peak of traffic generated by the service to fill up the player buffer or how we can identify by observing the magnitude of the flows, throughput, the difference between the flows carrying the audio in the red in picture and the ones carrying video. But aside for these pieces of information, we have no sense of what is the underlying quality of the content that is being transmitted. Furthermore, uh, here we're really showing a very clean session, but normally the sessions are much more, uh, much more colorful and complicated to distinguish. But what do we refer to when we say video quality? Inferring the video streaming quality from encrypted network traffic consists in determining a number of metrics that uh, can impact the experience quality of a user. Here we show two examples of this. First, the startup delay, which is the time that takes um, from the moment the user clicks on the link of the video that he's interested uh, in watching and the moment the video actually starts playing and the resolution, which is the common amount of pixels that constitute each frame of the video. To infer these metrics from the traffic, we are then left with a number of features that can be collected by monitoring the traffic flowing through the network. In our work, we aggregated these features into three categories. The network layer features, which are the features that solely rely on information available from the observation of a network flow identified by the IP port, port apple, the transport layer features that are the ones that are extracted from uh, observing the layer for headers and possibly keeping the track of the state of these protocols. And finally, the application layer features, which include any feature related to the application data that can be deduced by observing the patterns of the traffic. For example, uh, in the video case, we can identify individual segments as they are downloaded but be aware that this does not involve any sort of deep packet inspection. An important thing to notice is that not all features are created equal. In particular, transport layer features are particularly expensive to track because they require to maintain a lot of state, which is non trivial when done at blind rate in uh, normal equipment. In this uh, presentation, uh, I will focus solely on the results and the models we generated for resolution, but in our paper, we actually address both metrics. In our work, to design models that infer the aforementioned uh, quality metrics, we collected these uh, three categories of features for around 13,000 video sessions for four of the major video streaming services, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, and Twitch. In particular, we use a control lab environment to collect data for uh, different network conditions as well uh, to obtain the ground truth of the video sessions. Uh, in, our, in our work, we aim to infer the true video quality metrics at 10 seconds interval. 
uh, a good trade-off between uh, the precision of inferring the matrix and the likelihood that each time being will contain complete video segments uh, download. We infer the start tag in seconds using the features extracted for the first 10 seconds of the video session and classify the resolution uh, in uh, actual resolution values for the remaining intervals of the session. We evaluate the accuracy of the models to rely on different feature sets for predicting the metrics uh, using all possible combinations of the three groups of um, features that I presented in the previous slide. We also experimented with a, a different number of regression and classification methods, but we finally picked random forest as our model for both as it led to the best results. We first show the results expressed in terms of precision and recall of the inferred models for resolution. Remember that we divide each video session into 10 second time intervals, and we then the, the, uh, conduct the inference on each time beam that follows. Each line corresponds to the random forest multi class classifier trained for each feature set. Uh, in this specific plot, we present the aggregated results for the different layers across the studied services. Our results show that models that rely on network and application layer features outperform the models that rely on network and transport layer features across all services. We do not show other possible combinations in this plot because, um, for example, the, the ones that use transport layer features only, because we assume that network features are the easiest to collect and would hence uh, be used in any possible scenario. The obtained results are in a strict context contrast with the prior, prior work, which provided models that rely on transport layer features that are more costly. And we also differentiate from previous uh, attempts because uh, our models estimate um, uh, their solution at a fine granularity in contrast to using just a good or bad metric. To reinforce the obtained result, we also explore the gene index for feature importance in, in the prediction obtained for the network plus application model. We report here the results for Netflix and YouTube, but the same conclusions are observed for the other services. We observe that most features at the top of the ranking are actually related to segment sizes. This result confirms that um, the general intuition that given similar content, a higher resolution implies more pixels per inch, and thereby requiring more data to be delivered uh, for each video segment. In fact, Without using segment-related information and features, these models do not achieve uh, similar precision and, uh, and, and, and recall. We then study the accuracy for each video service using the best performing model, the one using network plus application features. We see that overall, the precision and recall are above 81% across all services. The accuracy resolution inference model is particularly high for YouTube and Twitch, with an average precision of 98% for both services. The accuracy is likely lower for Amazon and Netflix, but this is probably due to the fact that these services change their resolution more frequently to adapt to playing conditions. Whereas YouTube and Twitch often stick to a single, most likely lower resolution for a longer period of time, making it easier for the model to correctly infer the current, the current code. We also evaluate the generality of our models. In our case, we refer to generality as the ability of generating a single model that uses data from multiple services and can work across the same multiple services. In this figure, we see three possible solutions to this problem. The, what we call a composite model, that is a model trained using data from all services and we use, we use it to predict the quality of any video service that belongs to the training set. An excluded model, which is the one trained using data from three services, in this case, Amazon, YouTube, and Twitch, and is tested on the fourth one, in this case, Netflix. This scenario is actually the most ideal one as it removes the requirement to collect data with ground truth for a larger number of services. Finally, we call specific model the model that uses uh, that we use in the previous slides that, use, that, that is trained on a single service and tested on the same one. Our evaluation shows that composite models perform nearly as well as the models that rely only on sessions from a single service across both quality metrics. This result raises hopes that the composite model can generalize to a wide variety of uh, video streaming services. 
But when we train models using only a subset of the services, and, uh, and we evaluate it on the left, the out one, the excluded model, we see that the accuracy of both startup and uh, resolution degrades significantly, uh, rendering the models unusable. These results highlight that although our model, uh, our modeling method is general and achieves good accuracy across four services, the training set used to infer quality metrics should include all services that one aims to do prediction for. Using the generated models, we analyzed the data collected during a year-long study in 66 homes across the United States and France. To gather the data used by the models, we developed a network monitoring tool that collects the features used during the inference. Our dataset was very diverse as it included homes from different operators and with downstream throughputs ranging from 18 megabit per second all the way to 1 gigabit per second. During the duration of the deployment, we have recorded about 200,000 video sessions from the four major video services providers uh, we had developed models for, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, and Twitch. Uh, but during our testing, uh, the deployment raised a new set of challenges that are usually not faced by offline models that operate on curated traces collected in lab settings. Two factors in particular affected uh, the accuracy of the models the granularity of training data versus what is practical to collect uh, in an operational system, and the challenge of accurately detecting uh, the start and end of a video session in the presence of unrelated cross traffic. Here we discuss only the first problem and we refer to the paper for further information on how we solve, we solve the second one. The data granularity problem arises from the fact that the training data we collected is a precise session start time that corresponds to the precise beginning of the video session. The start time affects the location of the intervals that are used for aggregating the features used in the inference. But an operational monitoring system cannot export this information, um, the information about each individual packet. It is hence for more practice to report traffic statistics in fixed time intervals, in time intervals. Due to this limitation, the data collected from a deploying system will only have data collected in time intervals that are not bound to a precise uh, session start time that corresponds to the video start time. This corresponding mismatching granularity creates a challenge for the inference models as the initial error propagates across time beams affecting the underlying statistics used by the models. To address this challenge, we decided to introduce the same type of noise that might be present in the data collected in the real world into the training data itself, so that it will more closely resemble the data collected in the deployment. Uh, the techniques that we apply are grounded in the general theory of domain adaptation, and uh, to achieve this goal, we pre-process our training data and artificially, artificially adjusted each session start time over a window of minus to plus five seconds, from the actual start uh, of the video session in increments of 0.5 seconds. For each new artificial start time, we recalculate all metrics based on this value for the entire session. This technique has two benefits. The first one that it makes the models more robust to noise as we introduce it in the training data itself. And also it, it provides a way to increase the volume of the training data. In summary, we develop a new set of models that infer startup delay and resolution more precisely and with more granular indicators than previous work. Our, model, uh, our models are robust to deployment settings thanks to the application of techniques such as domain adaptation. And we apply these models to 16 months of traffic from uh, 66 homes to demonstrate the applicability of our models in practice. Our study, on the relationship between access time capacity and video quality, found surprisingly that higher access speeds provide only marginal improvements to video quality. Our work points to several avenues for future work. First, our composite model uh, performed very poorly for services that are not in the training set. And uh, a truly general model that could predict video quality for arbitrary services remains an open problem. Second, more work remains to be done to fully understand the potential of domain adaptation for network inference problems. With this, I conclude my talk and be free to contact us at the email address um, shown in the slide 
And don't forget to take a look at our webpage as well as the Wall Street Journal article that was written on this research. Thank you very much.